make no mistake, there will be a trial, and when that trial ends, senators will have to decide if they believe Donald John, Donald John Trump incited the erection, insurrection <laughs> against the United States. Incited the erection. That's amazing. I didn't know that one. That's... He even made like a little oof face. He even made like a little oof. Well, he no. stumbled on Donald John Trump. Too. I almost thought he was about to say Johnson. Donald Johnson Trump. Like that, like there were going to be uh, two accidental dick jokes in there. Oh, it's good to laugh at Trump. Uh, oh that was God. on January 22nd of 2021. That was Majority Leader Chuck Schumer uh, accidentally uh, suggesting that President Donald Trump incited the erection against the United States. Hi, um, uh, I'm Matt Walsh. I play Mike McClintock. Hi, uh, my name is Tim Simons. Uh, I played Jonah Ryan, and this is uh, Second in Command, a Veep Rewatch podcast where we look at the show from the point of view of the lowest rung on a very high ladder. And I've heard from Arvin, uh, who this is, yeah. somewhere in between his rehearsals and uh, our show... Broadway. The Great White Way. Um, got uh, some fan suggestions for taglines. Oh, we Look do need some workshopping. Good. All right, cool. You want to just blast right through them? Sure. Where second place is the first to lose. I don't know. What okay. That... We look at the show from outside the inner circle. Ooh, maybe there is something about how we're the outsiders, we're the insiders outsider, we're the outsiders insider. That is pretty good. A Veep rewatch podcast hosted by two guys who were there for it all but played characters that weren't all there. I like the turn. I don't know if that necessarily... The uh, back like, half of that doesn't work, right? Yeah. Yeah. A podcast where Tim can't stop talking and Mike was good at his job? That's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> that's pretty funny. A questionably accurate... Arvin sent that one in, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that's got to be Arvin. He's laughing too hard. A questionably accurate Veep rewatch. <laughs> that's actually that's, pretty good. That's actually... That's a that's a very accurate uh, uh, description. That is a front runner, in my opinion. A Veep rewatch podcast from the Veeps of Veep, close to power but wielding none of it. A little too wordy. Um, like uh, the close to power but wielding none of it is kind of appropriate. Yes. Okay. Uh, our pr uh, second in command. Our presidential account of an unpresidential show. Hmm. Our unpresidential account of a presidential show. Second in uh, command, a, a Mike, Mike Redemption, Redemption podcast. podcast. Yeah. Arvin wrote that one too. Yeah, I'm over it though. I didn't, uh, I, I'm, I'm over it. Uh, second in command, we were always behind. That's, that's funny. It doesn't help describe. It doesn't help someone on the internet like yeah, stumbling just, upon okay. it. Uh, a uh, second in command, a podcast where someone may or may not have set themselves on fire twice. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. A questionably accurate Veep rewatch. That's kind of good. good. What if we that. combine this with a questionably accurate Veep rewatch or V watch? Don't put a ladder in this. Are you going to put no, a ladder there's in no, this? No, okay. no, there's not going to be a ladder. Okay, go ahead. A questionably accurate Veep rewatch from the Outsiders Insiders. From the Outsiders Insiders. Go to that sentence. Is that how they phrased it? No, I'm, I'm putting two together. From Outsiders from outside the inner circle. But what I'm saying is we then take, we lift the thing from the show where Jonah was the outsider's insider. And then later he was the insider's outsider. So say how do you, a questionably accurate Veep rewatch from the outsider's insider. From the outsider's insiders. That just, doesn't that make it more confusing? Maybe. I don't hate it. It's better. It's better than the ladder. It is better say. than the ladder. It is better than the ladder. All right. Why don't we go with that for Let's right now? Let's go with that for now. All right. It's... So this is second in command of Veep Rewatch, a questionably accurate Veep. Well, no, the title of the show. A question, in maybe a questionably accurate podcast, Veep Podcast. No, Veep Rewatch. But we have already said Rewatch. So it's Where second in command that? of Veep Rewatch no. is the name of our show. This can be everything. Well, no, but the name of the show is second in command of Veep Rewatch. Oh, that's, that's the, the full title that's of the, the show. Full title. Oh, so wherever that title appears, like if you search, it'll always say yeah. second in command of Veep Rewatch. That's always paired yes. with it. Okay. So what is a second in command of Veep Rewatch, uh, a questionably accurate Veep podcast from the Outsiders Insiders. Yes. Let's go with that yes. for right now. Yes. All right, cool. I like that. Season three, 
episode one and we've gotten something that might work. I know. We, well, change is, it goes at its own pace sometimes. What is the title of this episode today, by the way? Oh, Some New Beginnings. We're going to be talking about uh, season three, episode one, Some New Beginnings yeah. with uh, the captain himself, Armando Iannucci. Armando Iannucci. Armando Iannucci, the showrunner of seasons one through four and the creator of Veep. Yeah. I'm so excited uh, that we got it on the books. And one thing that I love about Arm is that he's just always a, a, a smart, good hang with a lot of experience and a lot of different... Like, every time you talk to him, it's like you have, like, the best dinner guest. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. he, he just has so much experience, not just, like, in comedy and not just in television. But, like, he wrote a book on, like, how to enjoy classical music as somebody who doesn't know the history of classical music. Like, he just knows how to... Not only does he know how to interpret classical music, but he also knows how to tell somebody... Tells the layman or to help the layman enjoy it. I just... He's the best. Yeah. He's a phenomenally uh, talented, interesting, and nice, nice person. Yeah. Let's Armando go. Iannucci. Let's talk to him. So excited today, Tim. Yeah, this is really this exciting. This has been a long time coming. We have a uh, show creator. A number one troublemaker. A, no a number one troublemaker. <laughs> through Ar comedy, of course. Armando Iannucci. <laughs> and gentlemen, Armando Iannucci. Uh, Showrunner for the first four seasons of Veep uh, has decided to join us. Hello. I, I remember talking to you at one point, uh, I think during the Trump presidency, and I'm, in, I'm interested to mm. hear how this, how you have been affected by this in writing in, over the last mm. couple of years, about how satire it feels like when we were first <laughs> starting the show felt like a scalpel. And in the last four years, it kind of started to feel like it had to be a sledgehammer. Have, yeah. ha, has that affected your writing? It, uh, like, it ha, is there any value in going for subtlety? <laughs> uh, at all? At all? Well, are we allowed to swear on this podcast? Yes, that, yes, it's yes. Filthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's Veep. Yeah. It's well, Veep. I find that every morning on Twitter, I go, good morning, and Putin, go fuck yourself. And that <laughs> seems to be about, that seems to be on the level I'm at at the moment. Yeah, political you know? discourse, yeah. Um, and, um, I don't know. I think it's, well, when Trump came along, he was sort of his own entertainer, wasn't he? He, he was so into ratings and audience and, and he, and, 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 you know, his performances are kind of an entertainer's performances, aren't yeah. they really? They're, they're kind of crowd pleasing. Yeah. Um, and, and we, when we were doing Veep, we existed in a world where there were set rules about how politics was conducted. Yeah. And each episode showed, you know, how some of those rules might be bent and occasionally twisted. But when Trump came along, he was saying, there are no rules. You know, I, I could literally shoot someone in the face in Fifth Avenue and still get elected, you know. And uh, grab their, and grab their pussy. And grab their and pussy. And grab the pussy, yeah. <laughs> what a bad day for that person. <laughs> to have all that happen to them. And to top it off, he then gets elected as a result. Um, <laughs> That's the triple whammy. So really. you're laying on the um, sidewalk and seeing the results. <laughs> <laughs> After that I was just getting up. I was going out <laughs> shopping, minding my own business. Someone shot me, grabbed my pussy. Went bang in the face, <laughs> bang in the pussy, <laughs> bang in the ballot box. Oh my God. <laughs> happy, happy November 5th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, what was the question? Uh, uh, subtlety, subtlety and scalpel subtlety. and sledgehammers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I, as as I, I think as we've all just demonstrated, subtly still reigns supreme. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, you're a healthy eater. Yeah, man, I, I like to eat healthy, but I'm a terrible cook. Oh my god, this is perfect. Sun Basket delivers healthy meals, so you aren't on the hook to shop and cook, and still be healthy and hit health goals if you got them. That. Honestly, it would be perfect for me. Yeah. Because uh, what I'm really not good at is the organization of recipes. Like, my brain doesn't operate that way, or at least I don't train my brain to operate that way. I don't work hard enough at it. But one nice thing is that uh, I would imagine, like, do they send you all the ingredients kind of all dosed out already? Yeah. And you've often said you're better at eating than cooking. 
<laughs> I've often you stand said by that. that. Yes, I stand so, by that. Well, Sun Basket delivers the joy of eating with bold flavors, organic produce, and sustainable seafood and meats. Sustainable, I love that part. I'm getting the sense that you that I could stop suffering through sad lunches by eating Sun Basket because they have exciting new grain burrito and noodle bowls for every day of the week. They have achiote citrus pork, black rice, bibimbap and uh, Szechuan glass noodles. Just heat, eat, and love in minutes. Oh my God, that is right up your alley. That sounds really good. Some good uh, savory times there. Honestly, if it's ready in minutes, if it's like good and healthy and ready in minutes, that's perfect. For or me. even better, if somebody cooked it for you, like your wife or your kids. Oh my God. That's a this home is run. A good, it's just a home, home run Sun Basket. Well, right now, Sun Basket is offering $90 off. What? And a free gift when you order? Apparently, if you go to sunbasket.com slash beep and enter promo code beep at checkout. Oh my God, that's sunbasket.com slash beep and enter the promo code beep. $90, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Go to Sunbasket. Filmmaking is the highest art form if done well. And so I'm so curious about it. And I've directed a couple things. And there's a class on Masterclass taught by Ron Howard, which I'm so excited to check out because... Ron Howard, great filmmaker from Burbank, also makes it cool. But it's great to have a deep dive into something like that from someone who's done a bunch of really good movies. And the thing that I like, and I don't really have uh, designs to direct a movie, but the idea that I love about taking a class, like taking Ron Howard's class on directing and filmmaking for me, is that it m helps me become a better audience member of of like sitting in front of a film, of, of a filming. You know what I mean? Like I, I would understand their work better by knowing more about their and their thoughts behind it. Yeah. Is there a masterclass that's piqued your interest? Like that you're thinking about, I'm going to check this out and get better at it? I'm going to try to get better at uh, some cooking. I, really? Because if we talk about how I eat healthy, but I'm not a great cook. Uh, so I'm looking at some of their cooking classes. They got one by Roy Choi, who's an LA guy. I don't think he's Burbank, so it's not that cool. But um, LA's cool in its own way. I mean, it's cool in its own way, but yeah. it's not Burbank cool. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. So I highly recommend you all check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And as a second in commander, you get 15% off an annual membership. So go to masterclass.com slash veep now. That's masterclass.com slash veep for 15% off masterclass. Hey, everybody, this is Tim just jumping in real quick to say that if you want to ask specific questions, you can leave us a voicemail at castmedia.com slash second in command. And uh, we love getting those questions. So please submit them. Um, I'm worried that people don't know that that's an option. So castmedia.com second in command. Ask us a question there about episodes coming up or guests that we might uh, have on. I, I want to ask a, 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 a question you may have been asked a million times, but how did the mm. seed to do Veep come into your life? Because you obviously mm. have done tons of successful comedy, a proven writer, you were, uh, the thick of it was up and going. Was it something mm. that your obsession with politics as a kid just kept going? Was it an idea? Or Absolutely, yeah. I always was obsessed with, with American politics and, and, you know, when old enough, would stay up late to watch the election coverage and so on. So I was always fascinated by it. and. I suppose it really sparked from, I was doing The Thick of It in the, in the UK, which was our sort of original politics series. And, and then I made a film kind of spin-off of it called In the Loop, which was about the British government and the American government going to war on an unnamed uh, Middle Eastern country. Um, uh, and that involved me doing lower-rung UK politicians and staffers with their equivalent in Washington, um, which is where I, I first met and worked with Anna, with Anna yeah, Tomsky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that was her first big role on her return. And Zach, from, and yeah. Zach Woods. Obviously. Was Zach Woods in that one? And Zach, yeah, Zach Woods, Woods yeah. was in there. Yeah. Yes. So Zach Woods and Anna Tomsky. Um, and as a result of the research we put into that film, you know, I visited the Pentagon and... Um, talked to people from the CIA and the intelligence and the national security and state department. So on. I, I, I came away with a kind of much more of a, a kind of knowledge of how Washington worked. Um, and then the film came out and it, you know, we got a, an Oscar nomination on the script and so on. So I had a bit of a profile. We had the amazing James Gandolfini as um, um, Pentagon general 
four star mm-hmm. general. And that, um, uh, there's a line in it where he's asked, Have you ever killed anyone? So I remember Jim telling me that as part of his research, you know, he would ring up various Pentagon generals and ask if they'd want to go out for dinner. And they'd all say yes, because it's, you know, it's Tony Soprano. At 20, and he'd then say to them over dinner, Have you ever killed anyone? And he said, There was one guy who went, Have I ever killed anyone? Um, um, hang on a minute. Charlie, have I ever killed? <laughs> yes, 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 I have. Yes. <laughs> it feels, it, and, um, it feels yeah. like in movies they made, there's always a monologue about how you never forget if you kill a man. Like that's something that can never be undone. And this dude is just like, Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, have I? Well, there's, the, the reality is much more banal. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might have killed some people. I don't know. Um, but what, what interested me about that process was discovering that, as with the British version in, in Washington, a lot of these buildings look very grand and impressive on the outside. I mean, they're, they're built to look like ancient Rome, aren't they? Mm-hmm. With big pillars, the white marble pillars, and very impressive. But once you go inside them, there are people there just doing an office job, kind of making it up as they go along, not quite knowing what's happening and so on. And there was one guy who said that, you know, once the US invaded Iraq, actually they said the best intelligence they got was not from their intelligence operatives on the ground, but from the Baghdad morning newspapers. He said they were always much more accurate than... So it's that thing of it looks grand and important. It looks like everyone knows what they're doing from the outside. Yeah. But the moment you step inside, it's like any other working environment. So that's what I took from that. And then HBO, after In The Loop, HBO approached me and said, look, we've been wanting to do a Washington show for a while. And we haven't quite found the right vehicle or format from it. Do you want to have a go, basically? And I said, yeah. You know, I was a big fan of HBO and yeah. Larry Sanders shows my all-time favorite show. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and my interest in politics. So we said yes. and But it took us a while to work out what the premise was going to be, where it was going to set. We, we thought, maybe, is that a congressman? Is that a senator? Is that a governor's mansion? Is that a mayor's town hall? What is it? And, and I was reading this enormous biography of Lyndon LBJ by uh, Cairo, this four-volume 2000 page uh, edition of LBG, where there's an inherently, I mean, it's an amazing book, but the premise is here's this powerful guy who was Senate majority leader, you know, who could bend the Senate to his will just by sheer force of his physical presence and his personality, suddenly says yes to becoming vice president and is literally in an office by himself, drumming his fingers, uh-huh. asking literally, did the president call? And there's something kind of comic and tragic about that. And then, of course, and he made he made the calculation that he would go, he would say yes to the vice president's job because he calculated that it was his best way of becoming president. He knew he wouldn't get elected by the party because he was a southerner. Um, but he 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 looked at he looked at history and saw that one in four vice presidents become president. So he thought that's my best chance, and he was right. Um, so, so there you go. So is that thing of so near and yet so far and yet so near and yet so far and yet so near, you know, (laughs) so when you, when you were putting this together after HBO, you felt like, you felt like there was still stuff that excited you about political comedy, but even through the thick of it and through in the loop. It felt like you're like, well, oh, I was excited to, uh, you, like the idea of another political comedy show was exciting. Well, there's a number of things. I mean, it's, it's, we had a great time working in Washington on In the Loop, but also, you know, working with HBO, but also it's such a bigger stage. You know, it's, it's, my UK show was set in an obscure, nothing department mm-hmm. in, in Whitehall, whereas this is next to the Oval Office, isn't it? It's not the Oval Office, but it's next to the Oval yeah. Office. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a much more exciting. And also, you know, the, it's, an, it's an environment where actions actually do have consequences. You know, if you say the wrong thing, it's magnified a thousand times. And it was at the dawn of that whole Twitter, you know, you, you'd say the wrong thing on Twitter and 
it's become an issue yeah. and, and and so on. Did Everyone's you, a reporter now and yeah. Did you ever or did you ever have a crush on American politics or like did you like you say like once you get inside these fast these marble facade buildings and you see the inner workings yeah. you know nobody knows what they're doing but on your journey as an artist or a young man into you yeah. know who you are now did you did you have a crush or like an illusion of like the Americans know how to do politics unlike us British or, and <laughs> at what point did that go away or did you never have that no, I, I, I think I enjoyed the drama. I was attracted to it because it was the drama of it, the, the high stakes involved. Okay. Um, uh, uh, it, it was more of that. I think what was the eye-opener for me was like close up realizing how a lot of it is run by 12-year-olds. You know, all these, we met so many in our research, we met so many, uh, you know, 22 or 23-year-olds who'd graduated with a degree in terrorism studies from Georgetown University, and who now were the spokesperson on security matters for senator such and such. Or had, you know, oh, there was one guy who'd been posted to Iraq to help draw up the constitution, you know, and you thought, you haven't even bought a car. You know, how do you know how to, how to run a country? You know, it was, it was that. That was the kind of, for me, that was the shocker, I suppose. Yeah. Um, that, that so much of it is to do with, just being in the right place. Yeah. You know, that thing, of, which is why Jonah, which was why we met this guy uh, when we were doing our research for the thing. I won't say his name, but he was the digital, he was Obama's West Wing digital Twitter feed guy. And he was the one who would always re reply to us with like the most panicky, nervous emails, like, well, I can see you for five minutes, but it's hell here. I'm in the West <laughs> Wing. It's hell, you know, <laughs> trying to big up. And he arrived for lunch and he was like really red from having drunk too much and shaking and he was Oof. arriving smoking. And he sat down with us and his lunch was a beer. Oof. And then after about 20 minutes, he went, I've got, I've got to go. And he went back and, and we thought, well, we've got, so we christened him Jonah. And he was small and had a beard. And honestly, Tim, when we were casting Jonah, we saw every small bearded actor in America for the part. <laughs> and we couldn't find... And yet you, I think you were the very first person that I saw, but you were you were not who I'd envisioned physically Jonah in my head. So you made me laugh. But I thought, but that's, you know, obviously he's got to be small and have a beard. Yeah. And in the end, we thought, Maybe we're clinging too much onto the kind of, yeah. <laughs> the small bearded element of it, and not the kind of <laughs> White House douchebag element. Of it. Well, I'm going to do uh, what we always yeah. do. I'm going to read the synopsis of this episode, not to interrupt, okay. not to interrupt a better conversation. So, this is episode one of season three. During her book mm -hmm. signing tour for her new autobiography, some new beginnings. Uh, our Ameri our next American, what is it? Our next American, our next American journey. Our next our American next, journey. Our next American journey. <laughs> Selena receives, we just pull these off the internet. We don't do much work on this show, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. yeah, yeah. No. We outsource uh, most yeah. everything and we've never actually read yeah. this before, so this could be wrong. Yeah, Selena, no, yeah, we right. got it from so a Russian news site. Still phoning it in, still phoning yes. it in. As yeah, a, but <laughs> yeah. you but, recognize this level of effort. But faking it well <laughs> enough that it fools 80% of the people. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Selena starts looking for a campaign manager, even though she hasn't announced her plans to run for president publicly. Meanwhile, Mike mm -hmm. is getting married and Amy and Dan fight over a coveted promotion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's not, yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Yeah. yeah. Broad uh, strokes. Broad strokes. And this is, uh, go ahead. And, and Jonah is setting up uh, um, an anonymous gossip and information website from the West Wing. Yeah, his gossip tainment. West, West gossip tainment yes. website. So one yeah. of the things that, struck us yeah. when we watched this like you said like i can actually watch it like as an actor you just watch like oh i wish i could have done that better i don't like the way i look but six years later you can watch it as a fan and one of the things we yeah. really have noticed is like season one amazing season two like 10 times more amazing like the show just exponentially gets better and bigger and more interesting so jumping from season two where selena is she, we finally, the president comes into her office in episode 10, doesn't he? Yeah. And she yeah. says, like, he's going to retire and I'm going to run for president. And you kind of left it as yeah. the team's excited, like, oh, my God, it's all going to be great. And yeah. then we, of course, see yeah. the morons she's surrounded with. And we sort of, she's giving a yeah. tour to some young people that Joe yeah. had brought in. And that's how you ended it with a really long credit roll. She's like, it's better yeah. to be president, I think is her last line in that episode. So between season two and season three, yeah. First question, did you have an idea 
where season three would go? Uh, not at the start. We, we, we always liked at the end, in the final episode of each season, just slightly pulling the rug out from underneath us so that we kind of had a bit of a problem to deal with in the next season or something chewy to, to, to try and deal with. So I remember thinking at the as we were writing the end of season two, and I think you'll remember we would never really have the final episodes written until much nearer the time. <laughs> I, we've, uh, uh, we've talked about that. <laughs> we've you, talked about that. Almost, and, almost, and every I, I episode, only, I, almost every episode. Almost every episode of this, I have begun by saying. Uh, so at this point in shooting, we were very behind. Uh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether to kind of apologize or just say, no, oh, just, just this is love suck and, it up. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, love yeah. And yeah. Thank you. you know what? <laughs> the proof is on screen. So whatever, well, it's whatever, a great show you made or we all made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, and so we thought at the end of season two, what if she's just told she's going to run for president? That would be good because that would just shake everything up. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the team behind her would be slightly rivals for each other's sphere of influence, you know, especially Dan and Amy, I suppose, trying to, there's a kind of real um, ding dong between the two of them all the way through that season, I think season three. My question too is like, do you remember any of the people, because you guys always met people before each yeah. season. Do you remember any of the interviews that struck you? Because like in this episode, for example, there's basically, uh, what's his name? Blake Nelson or Blake, the guy oh, who, uh, yeah. Blake, yeah. He's the guy who's a yeah. failed presidential candidate. Like, I'm just curious, was yes. that based on an interview of someone you met? Or <laughs> were, were there were there any no, interviews? I was, that, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was thinking, I mean, I was thinking of an amalgam of like Mondale and... Yeah. Um, Romney. Uh, possibly Bob Dole as well. Bob but, Dole, uh, yeah. And also, um, uh, what's it, Dukakis. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that element of, you know, you can imagine them spending the next 10 years of their life being ignored by the the party faithful. Yeah, um, we did. Julia and I. I can't remember where it came in the process of you know which season it happened because it, it's all a blur. But yeah, we did have a, a conference call with Al Goa. I remember Julia sitting in my uh, apartment table with a with his phone in the middle of it, with Al Gore's voice coming out, and and us looking at each other, thinking it's Al Gore, <laughs> and, and and him. <laughs> him saying things like, yeah, I remember Bill Clinton would have like premieres at the White House cinema and I'd only find out about it the next day and I wasn't on a list and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> it still burns a little. <laughs> it's still, still 95% of the time he's, he's spent saving the planet, but there's 5% there of just, like, bitterness and... Yeah, <laughs> just, like, fr frustration. Leo DiCaprio is here, and you didn't you didn't tell me. Oh, thank, yeah, thanks, Bill. Tell me. Thanks, yeah. Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. When, Although I do remember when... I do remember... I, it was really for In The Loop. We had a long chat with then uh, Senator Biden's chief security guy, Blinken, Anthony Blinken, Oh, wow. who, who's now Secretary of State. Yeah. And he was very accommodating and so on. He, he talked for, he, he gave us several hours of our time. But I remember him saying, oh, it's always interesting to meet you guys. I mean, this job has its perks. You never guess who I met last week. I met Bradley Whitford. So he <laughs> kept, he's more excited. He's more excited about meeting people from the fictional yeah. uh, West Wing. And I remember when when we, we did go, I, I know who we met for this episode, actually, this season, actually, because because we wanted to explore the West Wing a bit more, um, Obama's body man, Reggie Love, showed us around the West Wing uh -huh. and gave us a tour and so on. But he, he, he would say things like, well, this is, this is the Roosevelt Room. This would be where CJ and Josh would uh -huh. sit and talk about. And I was thinking, but you're still referencing the West Wing, but you're it. Why don't you say this is where Barack Obama would sit down with Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to discuss Angela Merkel's visit or something? You're, why, can't, why isn't that exciting? Yeah, and it's just that thing, isn't it? It goes back to what I'm saying. It's 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 fundamentally it's you're in an office, you're working in an office, and the world is always more exciting somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> uh, unless you're that Jonah guy who who just thinks you know it's great to I'm be in the, the West most Wing. important. The um, <laughs> yes, this is one more little general question about this before yeah. we sort of get into the minutia of the show. Yeah, did you? 
I, while she and I were talking about this, how um, the, uh, about how so the the premise of the show is that it follows a vice president who is very close to power yeah. but doesn't actually yeah. really have any. And at the end of the second season, you kind of blow up that premise in a way that yes, we've joked about this in the past about how it seems like American television shows would be like, no, we found something that works let's and keep we are to not. It. Let's let's go. Let's go. <laughs> no, we are not yeah. changing it. She is close yeah. to power, but doesn't have it. And we are not. Did yeah. what I think the joke that we make is that you're just like, I don't know, you made some jokes about that. And then you're like, I don't know, I'm bored making jokes about that. Yeah. I want to make jokes about <laughs> this. Is that what it comes from? Or like, what was the decision behind being like, all right, we're going to blow up the premise of this show? I think so. I think it is that I have a very low kind of boredom threshold. And I just, <laughs> not that you bored me, yeah. but I just felt. Look, and, and it's also, I think it's to do with it being on HBO. I remember HBO saying, you know, look, what we want is people to return. We don't make 26 episodes. So it's not sort of show where if you miss one, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's all the same every week anyway, isn't it? We want people to watch an episode and think, I must watch next week. So it's about driving, not just each episode having its own self-contained story, mm-hmm. but there being a season story. And they give the example of... Curb Your Enthusiasm. There was the Seinfeld reunion episode. There was the producers episode. There was the coffee shop episode, not episode season, the coffee shop season and so on. And that's how you remember them and distinguish them. And, and I sort of took that as a kind of, okay, well, what is, what is, you know, for example, what will season three be? It will be her gearing herself up for campaigning to be president then. Let's see what happens, you know, mm-hmm. while still being vice president. And and I think it just means that it allows you to reset at the end of every, you know, the characters aren't where, you know, at the end of every episode, it's not like the characters go back to where they started for the next episode. Mm-hmm. No, we just we just move them along. And then the next episode, we move them further along. <laughs> and like, for example, at the end of this episode, we're talking about Jonah, who identifies himself as the West Wing, mm-hmm. is fired from the West Wing. Yeah, so yeah. now what happens? You know, it's that, it's that kind of thing, really. What Okay, what happens if we... And I remember we rested, it became a catchphrase, but we only used it in season one, you know, did the president call. Yeah. Uh, we never used it again until I think quite near the end uh, of, of an episode. It might but, poke um, into season two once, yeah. but you're right, it goes away. Yeah. It definitely goes away. Yeah. And that, I mean, like yeah. that right there is like a, a like an example of a joke, like a runner joke that killed and i feel like a lot of other things would be like all right well we're just gonna hammer that one into the ground and you just did away with it immediately i think it might even be season it might even be season two episode one it's like did the president call and they're like yes you know i feel like it was like yes. oh yeah 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 you oh, did actually oh, okay. oh shit yeah. <laughs> no we never did the dream sequence where selena dreams a whole musical where everyone's singing, <laughs> did the president call? And a flag comes down. No, you know, <laughs> she's on a warship. And <laughs> oh my god, it, yeah. right? No. So Kelly. in the episode, right off the bat, the the theme has changed. The theme music changed, and it's a yes. little bit more presidential. It's... Yeah. And I, I, I had yeah. forgotten that that had <laughs> yeah. happened. And when I was like, oh, that's right, Arm changed the theme music. Uh, yeah. And I remember I did then I like think a we little... gradually changed the little graphics within the the titles. I think for the next one, I think it was about became about her campaign now rather than her suspended campaign. Oh yeah, her yeah. suspended yeah. campaign yeah. from before. Yes, yeah, more present. Yeah, uh, yeah. The first, yeah. so we yeah. find York. Celine in a bookstore, potential yeah. caucus. We meet Sam Richardson for the first time. Sam Richardson there for the go. first time. There uh, we go. How Just, did he? How did he cross your? Uh, did he come in a room, or did you see him on tape? He came, yeah, he just he just um, taped for the part, really, uh-huh. and I thought he was really funny. And then we met up for he, we did a recall with a few people, and I was there. Um, I'm trying to remember if Julia was there as well, um, and Probably. it just made us laugh, really. Yeah, and he was just written for that first episode. That was just the part. Yeah, but we had such a good time on the shoot, especially at that bookshop that we thought, and then I think we bring him back at the end of this season, I think, from, from my remember. does come back. Because we just wanted to see him again. Did did you yeah. have a plan for Gary Cole's character or Kevin Dunn? Or were they also people that came into our show and you're like, we must get them back. That's that's. Or did you always know there would be multiple episodes for those characters? 
Oh, right, because they came in at the start of season two, didn't they? Yeah. Um, yes, I, I think... No, 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 we always had plans for them because we always thought season two, we'd see a bit more of the West Wing. We'd open up a bit and see the West Wing and how tantalisingly close Selena was to power and yet being, uh, you know, uh, away from it and so on. Okay. Um, no, but it's Sam Richardson's part. Richard Splett um, Richard is Splett. Uh, one of those instances of... See, this is why we don't write all the episodes in advance, you see, so that we can absorb anything new that comes up. And we just loved Sam so much and, and Richard so much that we brought him back later in the season and then made sure he never went away yeah. from season four onwards, you know. And it, and um, it makes, in rewatching it, there's like this little moment that he has that I, I feel like speaks to why he fit in so quickly, which is when she looks to him and says, is this a caucus goer? And he kind of yeah. quietly says, could be. Like, yeah. Could be, yes. As in, <laughs> he's like <laughs> excited, but also clueless. But well, he doesn't understand. Like everyone yeah. around Selena, he's not good at his job. We've, that's another yes. thing we keep talking about. I keep defending Mike as like, well, Mike's bad at his job, but you know what? He's not alone. He's not Everybody alone. Everybody around but he's Selena. Sort of, he's sort of... He's sort of innocent about it. It's not like he yeah. lies. I yeah. think he's like naively thinking, well, I'll do my best, you know. Yeah. I think he's been brought up really well to kind of be respectful of people and 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 do your best. He's the one, he's the one character who never swears wow. at all. In a, in in he, he in never any episode. swears. Oh, that's good. I think when Jonah shows him around the West Wing in, I think it's the late the late season, he says, Well, fudge me. <laughs> and well, yeah. shut that door and stuff, doesn't he? He never yeah, he's swears never all. like the filthy no. kind of blue. He no. makes jokes, but it's never the filthy kind of blue stuff. No, there is no. uh, there. So they're on uh, the Some New Beginnings book tour. They're in Iowa, yes. so it's clear that she's laying groundwork, but denying that yes. uh, denying that she's gonna. And by the way, that's a <laughs> thing that's very, I think, indicative of your style, Arm, because I feel like. All those book tour moments ended up being cut uh-huh. into a montage, but I'm sure you like shot a ton of them oh, and had a ton nice. of jokes ready and a ton of funny people yeah. ready to throw something yeah. at Selena. And I'm sure those guys were freewheeling a little bit, extending moments. Yeah. And I love that. I, like, think it's, yeah. I think it's cut from it, but it made us laugh. I think Richard Split says something like, they, they get the butter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She says, put it in the fridge. And he says, no, you don't need to put it in the fridge. No, it's. He says something like, um, no fruit is like that, and eggs. And egg, egg is a type of fruit. <laughs> uh, and, and they have an argument about whether an egg is a type of fruit. I mean, it was great, but, you know, <laughs> the time it would take to kind of get through that would would um, <laughs> eat into weddings and all sorts. So we couldn't... Um, it's probably in the deleted scene somewhere. The, um, there is... I just say, that is part of... Like, obviously, you write everything, but that is part of what you like, too, or part of what I enjoy working with you, is you allow those moments to happen, even though you don't know it, what's going to get in there. No, no, no. And it's about just giving you enough um, things to, to handle and see what might come out of it. I, I mean, also, we, I remember we spent a lot of time trying to come up with the right awful title for the book. Yes. Yeah. I do As remember that. As designed by a committee. You know, some new beginnings our next American journey. Yeah. It's just kind of, what the, what does that mean? <laughs> and that gave us endless stuff to play with in the script and, and on the day as she was... There's uh, even, was, uh, there's signing. even in like this super cut of nothing talk that uh, there's <laughs> even a joke where somebody's like, is some new beginnings, is that the title? And she's like, yeah. And they're like, is it too late to change it? And she's like, yes. Yeah, yes, <laughs> it yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Who was on staff? <laughs> I remember, I have this memory from filming the pilot that I think I, I mentioned when, yeah. in some of the earlier episodes when at the SRVA fundraiser, this guy is giving the introduction speech. And uh, they're really, what's in the episode is him saying, Vice President Selena Meyer. That's all you hear. Yeah. But the speech was two pages long. And I remember <laughs> you turning around and looking at Simon and saying with absolute reverence, this is shit. The speech that he wrote <laughs> to, for that guy. And he and I saw Simon take that. It was yeah. like the most lovely compliment. And then I saw it. And yes. he was like, oh, what a great compliment I just received. And it yeah, was, it this was is meant shit. to be a terrible, a terrible speech that said nothing. Terrible speech that, that said nothing. Of, yeah, yeah. There are yeah. so many moments of that, by the way, already in the show. <laughs> like that is a 
<laughs> there's always a funny, like we talk about one of the things Tim and I talk about is like it's comedy gold. Having a politician deliver something, which Selena does often too, deliver something which absolutely says horseshit nothing is so funny to me. Yeah. And I and, love like yeah. we do that multiple times throughout the show. I just remember when we were when we were shooting the pilot and Julia has to do Selena marking the death of someone uh, while giving a speech. Mm-hmm. She says something like, um, uh, you know, who passed away? He's, he's a dead now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> and it was so funny. And that's, that's where I thought we're, we're on to something here. I think we have something here because we were just making the pilot at that stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's just before Mike is about to get pencil fucked by the way. But Joan is about to pencil yeah, fuck Mike. Yeah, Joan is That's about right. to pencil fuck Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pencil fuck was a phrase that we picked up from our research. Yeah. yeah. I think you might have met some of them in the early days when we yeah. had li- these little kind of TED talks from, from members of the DC kind of elite yeah. telling That's us their jobs. One. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. Was pencil there fuck. someone on staff who was like, w- that was a go-to? I mean, in that situation, it was Simon. But was there someone on yeah. staff that was a go-to for like, you can always count on them for say nothing bullshit? Like, were you like <laughs> was say nothing. there somebody... Like Ian was a good one for cursing, right? Ian Martin was good for like... Yeah, yeah. Conjuring yeah. up Phil. I don't know. I mean, just... it seemed to be... No, no. I mean, Tony's very good at doing just acres and acres of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Will Will is good. Uh, yeah, there are, no, no. We yeah, we didn't we didn't have a kind of bullshit kind of specialist. Okay, <laughs> everybody could do that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Yeah, that's funny. Oh. So we go to Mike's wedding and we meet Wendy. Yes, and uh, yes. we see Tony. We see Gary for the first time away from Selena for an extended period of time. Yeah, which is really really Absolutely. interesting. Absolutely. And uh, what does he do? Well, he just becomes someone else's guest. He just yeah, he really so, yes. loves it too. He's actually enjoying himself. <laughs> which is, we both like yeah. how Mike's having joy and how Gary's having joy. Yeah. It's like yes. quite refreshing. It's nice to see Mike happy. Yeah. yeah. I remember being able yeah. to play that. That was so fun to, exactly that, to, yeah. to not be like, woe is me, to be really like in a good moment. Yeah. But one of the things Dan mentions, which I didn't realize, he says, I wrote that book. Did Dan write Selena's New Beginnings? I didn't realize that. Well, obviously, Selena didn't write it, <laughs> so somebody must have. So Dan <laughs> did write the book. I didn't know that. I just These found people... These people don't write their books. They yeah. don't. You know, they haven't got time or or are interested enough. To, it's their staff that write them. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember that phrase. The other phrase we we got was something like, was it called the Washington Read? When you give a book a Washington Read, which is basically you go to the index to see if you are mentioned. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's yes. yes. Giving it the Washington that Read. That came out in the first <laughs> season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, so but at, I, do you remember, oh, I was thinking about this, watching it this morning, I suddenly remembered, I think this was the season where just prior to it, maybe I was in LA for um, previews or, or something. Well, I met up with each one of you yeah. separately just to discuss your characters because I sort of thought, you've inhabited these characters for the last two years, so you probably know more about them than I do. Yes. And 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 we, and we we I, I did a kind of, you know, What's Mike's worst fear? What's his big? Because I think Matt, you suggested the idea of how he'd want to have kids and yeah, uh, that his sperm count being low or something. You know, I just yeah, I just remember sperm coming into it at some point. <laughs> yeah, do I remember that, Tim? Did I? I, I, <laughs> I was somewhere in West Hollywood. I do remember that, and that's like very yeah. that's very un-American for a showrunner to invite the cast. Mm to sort of mm. converse about what you're thinking and maybe to hear what their what ideas they might have. That's very uh, untrue of American television. And I we kind of talked about this, which I'll, I'll just throw it out here now. Yeah. You have a very collaborative sense when you work. Obviously, uh, you you bring uh, directors in and, and writers and you, and you, you mm. uh, are very just sharing in a good way. And actors, obviously, all the rehearsal stuff we get to do and some of it ends up in the show, mm-hmm. et cetera. But also consistently throughout your work, you definitely have a voice. There is a voice to everything you do. Like I could watch something maybe that I hadn't seen. I'm like, oh, that's totally Armando. You know what I mean? And I'm just curious about right. that balance. Which, I don't well, know. Well, I suppose of, like, it's allowing everyone... Collaborative, but also... It's, it's allowing everyone free reign, but knowing that in the end, you know, I've got to go into the edit with it. I've got to shoot it, and therefore, is it still within the shape of what we want for that season? It's a bit like being 
a benevolent dictator, really. Yeah, you know, that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can be all very jolly, jolly, and it's everyone's party, and uh, you're all welcome. But in the end, um, you know, if you don't agree with me, you will be shot. <laughs> um, it's... it's <laughs> You will be shot on camera saying the line that oh, I wrote for you. Yes, yes, yes. The, but um, you also I, I give think a lot. The collaborative of, thing sorry. is is good. Oh, sorry, no, no. I just think it's it's it, you know I think you get your best work out of being able to kind of engage spontaneously with people. You know, that's it. You also give a lot of. This is something we were talking about yesterday. You give a lot of, or at least I remember you giving a lot of free reign to individual episode directors, which is, again, something you don't see much, I feel like, in the States, where uh, it's not like you would defer to them, but you really, uh, like, when Addison was directing an episode, Addison seemed to be making a lot of decisions that maybe mm. other showrunners would have wanted to be like, no, 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 I want to I wanna make that decision. Come ask me. Mm. Uh, or, like, when Chris Morris directed, you were very yeah. hands-off. It Was that... Or, or was that just what I saw? Uh, were you well, actually... Well, it's a bit of both. I mean, it, it, you're talking about directors who I know very well. So mm -hmm. we kind of, you know, we, we kind of understand. We're all agreed roughly what it is we're trying to get, I think. Um, uh, and also, you know, I, I did have my kind of spies on the set who would let me know if something was being changed and I would uh -huh. finally be told <laughs> And I'd go, yeah, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, but don't want to, you know, get, get the director drawn into it, into this discussion. But, they, you know, I'll just be quietly, by the way, they've dropped this line and they're going with this. Yeah, that sounds good, you know. But I also know that, you know, what we're shooting is far more than we need. You know, we're shooting, we, we would shoot long page counts and, and scripts that were sometimes 40 pages long. Uh, so I know I've, it, it gives me lots and lots of options in the edit anyway to make the story the way I feel it should be, really. But, okay. but I also like to be surprised. I genuinely do like to be surprised. Um, you know, I, I don't want it all to sound like it's my voice. I want it to sound like the people who make Veep are making this, you know. Uh, and I remember once, I think it's in the Silicon Valley episode, which is a bit later on mm -hmm. this season, mm -hmm. is that right? Mm -hmm. Matt, when you came up to me and said that you and Tony had worked out a, a piece of visual comedy, <laughs> you just wanted to try it. When you're you're on a kind of um, bouncy ball, bouncy ball, and, <laughs> <laughs> and Gary punches you or something, and you go flying. You come flying off the ball, and you're holding a cup full of like M &Ms. candy, and the M &Ms, and the candy all flies up into the air and then drops loudly onto the floor. And I just fell apart watching it. I just thought it was the funniest thing. And I'm so glad you didn't tell me what you were going to do, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's something that I tell people a lot when people yeah, ask, like, was there a lot of improvisation? Like, the long answer is, like, well, we had rehearsals, but it was really kind of a big yeah. stew, and, like, but we had a script, and then there was some of it. Yeah. But then I always put this thing in, and it's like, yeah, but by season three or four, we were just asking for forgiveness rather than permission like, <laughs> like you can go up and explain a joke but sometimes it's better to just throw it in and see if it works yeah. and if it doesn't work, it work you'll just be like don't do that <laughs> yeah but you know no one's gonna know All the, you know if it doesn't work no one will see it you know, yeah that's the that's the key thing isn't it yeah yeah well you appreciate <laughs> like you said you appreciate it takes so much to get to filming and stuff and like the, the spontaneous creativity that you can have, have happen in any given moment, whether it's a new writer or a new actor, that's really valuable. And you're always seemingly, you've constructed a career out of remembering that or reminding yourself, like there's always, like you said, we found this Sam Richardson gem and thank God yeah. we didn't have everything written. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's inherent yeah. in, yeah. It's inherent in all the many sort of skills you bring to each project, is all I'm saying. Oh, well, it's very kind, but it's also, you know, it's also inherent laziness on my part in that I <laughs> never got around to kind of having the whole thing written. We, we know <laughs> nothing about that, given that we're three seasons into this rewatch and we're asking you about our tagline. We know nothing about... Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, about performative laziness. Our tagline should be the worst prepared podcast <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> <laughs>
So I'll throw <laughs> these things that was so at Mike's wedding. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Gary loves weddings. I'm just looking through my notes. Thank you so I just much, love Arvin. how much fun. That. Thank you very much, Arvin. Um, he's trying to butter us up. Arvin uh, is doing a Stephen Sondheim show, and his uh, he's trained in opera. Our producer trained in opera. Yeah. Oh wow, he's a real singer. Um, but he has been. I mean, his allegiances have been showing. Uh, he's much more invested in Stephen Sondheim than and our not in podcast. us. And he's trying to do these little things to bring us back to his side. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, We're giving you water. Giving us water. <laughs> Where we can be bought very cheaply. Um, just because we we often say this, we're a pretty big deal. We make five. We made five premium hours of. We five, made five hours of premium cable television every year. Every year. <laughs> so, every year. Every yeah. year we made five. We're a big hours. deal. We're a big yeah. deal. We're an we're extremely big, big deal. deal. Tell 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 Arvin that the key word at the moment is volume. <laughs> uh, you've got to make volume. Volume. Arvin. Yeah. Volume. Yeah. It's Product. not quantity. <laughs> uh, <no> st- <laughs> so S- Selena, after dealing with the public for a while, one of them, uh, again, this mm-hmm. title is confusing, a woman says, and Julia just frustrated, says, no, it isn't. <laughs> and then goes to Sam, can you talk to this wonderfully honest woman? She wants to just, she's bored and she wants to be over yeah. it um, and mm-hmm. decides that she's just going to go back and take some time. Yeah. Just going to chill. Yeah. At, and to chill. Uh, and then Sam comes in and says, big problem with a senator. Yeah. And she's and like, she's no, like no. he's got a big problem. A big problem. Again, not good at his job. Not, not good, good at, at his not job. Not good at his job. <laughs> I'm just pointing it out. Not good at his but job. This, but this, well-meaning. But well-meaning. well-meaning. Very well-meaning. And op- yeah. optimistic, yeah. always. This actually, yeah. this this idea of like getting to Julia in the hotel, unzipping her dress, sitting at the yes. desk and trying to knock over ah, the yes. books. Yes. Now, that was spontaneous. Because that, that, I remember, because I was shooting that day, I think the whole hotel stuff had got um, pushed to a bit later. Uh-huh. And... Chris was Chris Addison was directing, but he he wasn't around for that day, so I I managed I got to direct the 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 hotel room episode, and yes we we just thought we we saw her looking at her books, and I just thought wouldn't it be funny if she gets so bored she wants to see if she can try knocking the pile of books off the table by swinging her chair against. <laughs> the which, vice president of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, which is an extension. And she did, yeah. We always yeah. had you always had her spinning in her chair in her office too. That's like, right. The sort yeah. of it's almost like a soothing mechanism that's in yeah. in her character. I don't know how much ever made it yeah. in the show, but I remember yeah. moments where you guys would say maybe she'd be spinning now or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't doesn't Sue occasionally say uh, no? She, she's spinning. At yeah, the moment, spinning. You know? Yeah, you, just, you would see. You her. Just cut to her kind of spinning. Yeah. As um, as so I, yes. Oh, go ahead. And then I can't remember if it was deliberate or by accident, but she falls over. She, she just it. fully and, falls uh, over. Oh yeah, yeah that's she deliberate. falls over. Yeah, that's of course. deliberate. The because that's that's Julia, isn't it? She's oh. quite happy to just fall over. <laughs> I do fall love over. that. Stuff. <laughs> I do love that. This <laughs> as as I've like watched a lot of the things that you do. This choice of having like the second season end on this sort of like high note of he's not going to run, I'm going to run. And all these people get behind her and like, yes, ma'am, we're going to the West Wing. Boom, boom, pow. Yeah, I like this, to me, feels uh, like, uh, uh, and I know it feels weird to say this because you're right here, but an Armando Iannucci choice to then go from that to be like the the levels of boredom that she's in. Like the high of that, (laughs) of the end of season two, to have this choice be the next 18 months of your life are going to be the most boring hell talking to idiots. And I loved, yeah. I loved that, <laughs> the taking the time to do that of yeah. her bored in the hotel room herself. Isn't that the sad truth? You, you, you know, the more you explore politics, the more you realize it is, it's, a, it's all a performance, isn't it? It's all getting up on the stage and projecting a kind of persona, a certainty. Um, and being shunted from one place to another. And then if you're doing the presidential run, you know, doing that a thousandfold all over the country, being yeah. in places that you would never dream of going to. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and cold school halls and drafty churches and 
and, um, you know, barbecues and, and all those things. So we thought, I think we thought that would be quite a funny thing to see Selena doing for quite a bit of this season, actually. Just that stuff where you have to roll your sleeves up and try and look like an ordinary person. Remember Mark Zuckerberg doing his I'm normal, yeah. please love me tour of just going around the country like that and, you know, <laughs> not quite knowing how to speak to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So awkward. Yeah. I. Let's see. Oh, Ben, uh, I I love Ben's entrance where he's be, he's being mean to subordinates and then he goes straight for the booze. Like he's just yell. You can hear him <laughs> yelling at Get out of my Sam. way or I'll inhale you. <laughs> or I'll inhale you. It is <laughs> bellowing. We always talk to Kevin yeah. like at any given moment, what he's giving yeah. you on screen could actually just be in a drama. Do you know yes. what I mean? He's such a yes. rooted gravitas. Yeah. yeah. Fear, yeah. Fierce in the moment kind of persona yeah. and we always say like well that's actually from a drama movie right there like that moment there yeah. is not a comedy moment and it but it like it just it's so it's so funny like he to me i feel like sometimes reminds me of like those early days of the obama administration when you had Rahm Emanuel. Oh, i remember yeah. like a clip of Rahm Emanuel. Yeah. Uh, they were trying to do like this kind of puff piece behind the scenes of the Obama White House. And there was this clip of Rahm Emanuel walking by. It was like, look, I don't give a shit that you're here. You're in the way. Like, and I was like, yeah. oh man, it feels like you got to hang some drapes up on this and make, you know what I mean? You got to make this yeah. look nice. And he had no interest in making it no. look nice. And what's fun, no. fun about, funny about that guy is like, he's as tough as they come and, and Chicago politics just ate him up. He yes. just, he just was like, these people, I can't. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I, I, can't. I can't. I can't even forget it. No, Anyways. I'm going to go and run a bookshop. I think. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'll <laughs> yes. start a pizza place. <laughs> so, but we... Kevin's Kevin's great at that, isn't he? He, I mean, that's why he. I mean, I, I previously to, uh, I'd known him from dramas, so I, yeah, you know, okay. I recognized him from dramas. He's a great. You know, he's a fantastic, he has such presence. Yes. So in that scene, what we have, we have Ben talking about how he's out there for the four foot 11 stick of dynamite cowgills funeral. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that, uh, and he, and Ben, I, and I love this about Ben, uh, again, going like this Rahm Emanuel thing of, you know, there's like this whole thing that you've been setting up at the wedding of Dan and Amy fighting over who's going to be mm -hmm. campaign manager. And they just assume it'll be one of them. And Ben is like, forget both of them. Just get Bill Erickson. Like yeah. he's so, he's just like, no, like yes. they're, yeah. they're garbage. Get Bill Erickson. That's who you need. Yes. I think, I think Ben and Selena regard themselves as the adults and everyone else yes. are the children. And, you know, and you've got to feed the children, but fundamentally, you know, you're never going to work with them. Yeah. It's like, it's like when Selena says, uh, you know, everyone's at um, Mike, Mike's wedding. I kind of miss them. And then the phone goes and he goes, oh, it's just Gary. Just ignore it. Yeah. yeah. Just ignore <laughs> <You know>? it. <laughs> just. <laughs> yeah. With, in the same breath, you know. It's, and, it's, uh, <laughs> and, and then Maddox, we've set up a little bit of rivalry in yes. season two, like, he, yeah. you know, they have like a big swing and dick contest at the rifle range. Mm -hmm. And then he, right. and he pokes his head back in here. Was there, I don't, did you have a plan for Maddox like in this season, I guess? Cause I think. Of, well, eventually becoming a candidate because again, he's one of those actors, isn't he? That, that, that exudes gravitas and yeah. solidity. And so there's something funny about seeing someone who takes himself so serious. Seriously, this is Maddox, the character now, taking himself so seriously but then being stuck in absurd situations, you know, which yeah. reaches a, its climax, I think, in the in the primary debates where, where he, you know, he crashes and burns. Because so, um, one of the things... Yeah. I feel like you guys created these characters, like Furlong is one of the first sons of bitches who goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Selena in a good way. And then you have Maddox, mm -hmm. and then you have Randall Park playing Danny Chung, who actually reveals to be kind of a shithole asshole, kind of like Dan, because the way they bond to yeah. me means like, oh, you two yeah. are very similar. Like they get along yeah. way too well. And I feel like as a cook of this show, you have all these ingredients just waiting in the refrigerators. Did you, I don't know, like how do you approach like, because you have these wonderful characters like, oh, we could bring Furlong in here or, oh, we yeah. have this Randall Park Spice, but he's doing a movie right now. Like how does that all, I don't know. It's a big question. I don't know well, if I it kind of evolves, but I kind of enjoy that thing of like, you know, we obviously have our key team. Yeah. Uh, but but as with each season, 
the universe kind of grows. You know, it's if if we were making this now, it would be seventeen movies, wouldn't it? Really, with uh, there'd be the Randall Park movie, there'd be the Danny Chung movie, mm-hmm. there'd be <laughs> the Furlong movie. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know that um, it, it's that, and I kind of like the idea that what we're trying to suggest is that the world you're seeing is not restricted to that episode, that actually it exists beyond it. There are more people like this, you know, and we will occasionally bump into one or two of them every week, you know, Mm -hmm. but you could never quite know who's going to be next to come into the storyline or not. I kind of like that. And we, or you can introduce someone like Richard Splate, you could see him in one episode and suddenly he's there for the whole season the next time, because, you know, he's just part of that world. I kind of enjoy that. I like that idea of building a a, a kind of wider canvas. Really. And is that something you all carried in your head? Like, was there literally a, a writer's board somewhere with these characters and cards on a board? Like, don't forget, we got Chung and we got Maddox and we got... Or is it just uh, something in no, your it's head? Not like I've, it's not like I felt I had to keep all their characters spinning as well, but they're just useful to have as a sort of secondary team to bring in and help support you lot with whatever the storyline is for that week, I think. It's always... And I think also the audience kind of like it, the viewers like it, because they see... There's a familiarity when you see someone who they liked when 100%. they briefly, you know, appeared in one episode. Oh, they're back. You know, that's always that's always good. Yeah, we got excited anytime Furlong came into a table read because yeah. oh. it was just <laughs> fucking great to hear Dan deliver that filth. There are a couple things yeah. that I want to bring up from this scene. There's one, and I feel like this has happened a bunch, and I want to I wanted to ask mm. if... Uh, this is uh, this is a two part question. So when there's a okay. moment in here where uh, sort of where they talk about the the other like the alternate names of the book, which were like Red, White, and yes. You, and uh, yes. Hands of My Children, Hands of Footsteps <laughs> to the Future, Hands of My Future Children. Steps. Like, was that just was that you had decided on the name of a name a name for the book in the show and you're like ah, but we had these other ones that were also really we did, good yeah, yeah, yeah. like yes yes <laughs> <laughs> it's like the the file of jonah insults that we that's my, built that up is the second season. part <laughs> second question. that's the well, second part of this question this. was yeah. that just like holy okay, shit well. we just have four seasons of these and we got to use them yeah but that was also i remember um I remember being stuck in my hotel room with a bug as we were getting the script together for that for that episode, the inquiry, the mm-hmm. congressional hearings episode. And 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 I remember doing a round robin to all the writers saying, right, I need 10 from each of you, I need 10 insults for Jonah. And the next day, them all arriving. And I just remember in my room <laughs> sipping my hot lemon drink and <laughs> <laughs> compiling this. Uh, <laughs> this list. Um, yeah, no, that was great fun. So that was kind of the sort of homework that was set for the writers. That, that was, okay. Close to the thing. Yeah, yeah was, there was a good one in this episode that I had forgotten, which is Wendy calling Jonah the seven-foot mouth. Yeah, oh. <laughs> That's right, yes. Yeah, when she's got, slightly drunk. Was there a yeah. gonorrhea or a... S- Something hepatitis J. Hepatitis J. Hepatitis J. That's J really comes good. That one. <laughs> yeah, jo- we had Georgia. We had Georgia on, and she mentioned some of these emails yeah. where that yeah. you all would bounce filthy insults back and forth or jokes. That was sort yeah. of this ongoing document, and I, we were joking yeah. that it was always probably Roger Drew who would take it too far and say, "All right, that's enough, Roger." Yes. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Roger. <laughs> and there was also the the time difference became a kind of thing that we could use because we it, then I worked out we could then have 24 hour writing uh, because I could I could get the guys writing in Baltimore during the day and then at the end of the day send a kind of request for Jonah insults out yeah. to, to the UK <laughs> yeah and then wake up the next morning and there they would be you know you were like an old-timey yeah. newspaper editor right things coming <laughs> yeah. in and no 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 no, no. no. get it out yeah, what yeah, time yeah, is it yeah. Call yeah. London. What? Yeah. Get London. Wake them up. We, Wake them up. We can't say this. <laughs> there is so... Yeah. Another thing that happens in this scene, and this relates to a joke from earlier, is that as I've looked back on it, trying to figure out when these people turned from flawed characters 
but yeah. who had a but who had like a moral center to when did yeah. it turn? When did they start becoming just bad people? And I don't do you mean from from our perspective, did we decide or I, I think it's see, I think the whole thing is about I think a lot of people go into politics with, you know, good intentions and then the process starts grinding them down. Yes. And, you know, one little kind of compromise here and then another one here. But, you know, think of the, you know, think of the end result. The end result is you attain power, then at least you can start enacting Mm -hmm. the things you believe in. But by the time you get to that position, you've forgotten half the things you've believed in or you've had to publicly change your position on the things you believe in in order to get into that position. Yes. um, I think that's what I want. So I don't think there's, I think it's all a continuum, isn't it? It's like, it's not like there comes a point when they're all turned bad. I think they just turn um, worn down, you know, where they, some of them just surrender to it. I suppose Dan had always made that calculation from the start. Yeah. And Amy was probably always reluctant to do that and always, I think, told herself she was in it for a better good. I, I'm sure Selena right up to the moment she became president, felt that she could do something to change something. She'd forgotten what it was, but <laughs> I'm sure she'd remember it when she got into office. <laughs> you know, it, it's still always there, I think. It's, There's, it's um, funny, when we we had Tony in here, like I think for episode one and... There was some yeah. line that Julia said, and he's like, "Oh, there's the monster." Like he saw, <laughs> he saw the monster in Julia right, or in Selena right away, and we we're like, "Oh, I don't know if it's there yet." But yeah, anyways, yeah. Yeah. there's this Anecdotal. joke to that point. I feel like yeah. it sticks out to me when somebody like Amy does this, but she has a joke earlier where she says that Dan has more nervous tics than a shoe bomber, and that's such <laughs> a nihilistic joke. Yeah. That like that's yeah. one of those moments that points to like like a a, a a maybe a fundamentally good person being ground down. Like you're talking about it. Like it's I really. So. I, I, yeah, I think I think the inside of Amy's head gets bleaker and bleaker with each yeah. season. Yeah, think, and she tries not to show it, you know, because I think she went in with good intentions. Whereas Dan, I think, just went in with a kind of ambition. Really, yes. And whatever, telling himself he's still, you know, fundamentally a good guy, as it were. Yeah. Um, Dan so also think, not Dan good at his more... job. Dan also not good <laughs> yes. at his job. Yes. I remember it, it, in those lunches. I think I remember asking Reed, you know, what's Dan's worst nightmare, and I think he said, you know, having a panic attack in public. You know, was probably oh. Dan's worst nightmare because it's an indication that this Dan image that you've been perfecting. Well, that's what's coming up in the abortion episode. He loses his shit. You're right. Yeah, like you start kind of sowing the seeds of that pressure getting to Dan that ramps up until the London episode. And then later on, when he is campaign manager, having a complete, I think when we get to the London London episode later, yeah, he he has a full-blown kind of meltdown. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that that came from, I remember... Yeah. That the poker, I remember the poker thing coming from that meeting with that's Reed. Right, yeah. He was like, I gotta yeah. wanna see what he's like outside of work. And I feel like that's one of the reasons yeah. like that that poker game came into it. Uh that's there's right, another yeah. nihilistic joke in that scene where that just made me laugh so hard. Uh Ben saying, uh, uh talking about Cowgill, <laughs> Cowgill dying, and he says, Yeah, I heard that dog shook picked him. him up and shook him real hard. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Now, here's the thing. Is that, you know, fundamentally, all these jokes are shortest, aren't they? Yes, they are. Sh- should, so, should we be... <laughs> Apologizing? Should we be more sensitive? Should we be apologizing? Should we... Well, we... Uh, I, th- I think, I think we, in fact, we should take this whole episode down, actually. Yeah, we probably uh, should. What oh if this God. just became like an, apo- this is just an apology? Hopefully tour. we're dead before everything in this show is way too over the line. <laughs> I do remember us having a long discussion um, with our department about the size of the coffin and finding oh, one. Oh, God. Just the, God, when just you the get right, there. <laughs> the right size. I love you her, know. like, when she nudges the cover. Yes. Ever so accidentally, and then she readjusts <laughs> it. 
that to me was <laughs> like I I had a note about that specific moment for Julia. Like that yeah. is where I, I uh, like a moment yeah. where like you see Julia's sort of massive talent. Yes, going yes. up to the coffin, the sort of performative muttering prayer yeah. that isn't actually yeah. really a prayer. She yeah. just knows, and then it's the like the flag gets nudged. She she can pack yeah. and, so and then much putting in. the flag putting the flag back to its original position yes. as if she really meant it, as if it was all part of the ceremony. Oh, yeah, yeah. kind of. As if it, yeah. yeah. I'm uh, just yeah. doing that, just just making just, that better now. And now I'll go up yeah, and make my Making that better now. That's a great way to put <laughs> yeah. it. I just you came know, up here to just, make that better now. Nothing to But see that was here. always, you know, in the rehearsal period, I always, you always really re- remember that, you know, Julia has such a kind of, has such a heritage of working in comedy and, and, and in television sitcom, that, you know, whenever a situation would come up, she would always have at least four suggestions of how you could then play it, you know, uh, and, and demonstrate it. And, and, you know, it was real, uh, it was a real kind of um, masterclass in, in watching someone who has an instinct for, you know, where the job can go. Yeah. Tireless, too. Yes. Tireless. I also say yeah. that about all the British writers. I never saw them sleep. They were tireless. <laughs> well, I think they were tired. They were tired, they but I felt sleeping. like they were always around writing somewhere. I don't yeah. know. Like you would just glance in an alley and there'd be Simon on a laptop, <laughs> like like a yeah. feral animal. <laughs> yeah. It was all that, you know, it was, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, not tired, but jet lagged. There was a lot of jet lagged. Oh, going. yeah. There was a moment uh, uh, to, to that thing, to that, uh, Thing you're talking about like the the grand buildings but inside yes. nobody knows what they're doing i remember going on a white house tour uh at the uh, uh the correspondence dinner yep. one time yes and when we were in got there to see the bowling alley and got all to that. see the bowling alley there was this on this white house tour uh uh the person that was giving us the tour pointed in the direction of the situation room they were like, oh, that's the situation room. But, you know, nobody can really go in there. Like, that's like obvious. Like, it's a very special thing. Like, every once in a while, like one time Ben Affleck came through and he was allowed to yeah. go in there. And as this guy is saying, as somebody opens up the door to the situation room, comes out of it, sees our group. And like, I was in there and, and there were some other people that were way more famous yeah. than me. And he just opens the door and goes, oh, hey. Hey, do you guys want to see the situation room? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was just like, yeah. And they were like, all right, yeah, come on in. And then at some point, yeah. they noticed that like one of the guys that was in our group was French and had like a not an A pass, but a B pass or whatever. It was like a different color. Yeah. And halfway through the tour of the situation room was like, oh, you're not allowed in here. <laughs> oh, and it's like an actual, like, you know, you're like a foreign yeah. national. Like you you're absolutely- a foreign national. This is this is now. In, in, in international espionage. Uh, yes, like yes. it was. Yes. It was that poorly organized that you could just be standing there and somebody would be like, "Oh yeah, why don't yeah. you just go in the Situation Room?" Yeah, why don't you, yeah. Well, yeah. when we got a tour of then Biden's vice presidential office, there was like the the phone, like one of those red phones, like it was literally. Yes. And our guy was like, "Should I pick?" And we're like, "Don't pay, please don't like." And I can do that. Like don't she pick picked it up, <laughs> and it was just like the rules are a little. Little, little more uh, yeah, bendable suggestions. than you yeah. think. There's suggestions of behavior. I remember going around uh, with Reggie Love, the, the, the West Wing, and, and just seeing like, it's that thing of everyone wants to say they work in the West Wing. So they'll take a small cramped office as opposed to, you know, an enormous suite of offices mm. over yes. the road because they want to tell everyone that they work in the West. And seeing a four-star general just sit in a corridor on a chair with a laptop on his knees. That was his place of work. You know, just typing away, it really cramped, because he wants to say he's got a place in the West Wing. You know, that is the spirit of that. All right. So then, in yeah. this, this actually in the early seasons, one of the things that we're immersed in because you're you're pulling from reality is the technology was exploding for all of us. Like obviously, the news cycle was yeah. just had exploded to twenty four seven, and Twitter was coming out, and social media was a thing, and people were having press conferences talking to people who now were ahead of the news because they were live streaming the news on some site. And this episode sort of deals with it by forcing everyone to put their phones in the bowl. Like, put your yeah. goddamn BlackBerry phones away. 
At this point, it was probably not Blackberries. They were probably phone phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then mm-hmm. ultimately the story breaking about Maddox with Selena tracking like what's up with Maddox. We were just saying like that was a big part of the certainly some of the plots turned on like the pace at which they were yeah. aware of things breaking. And you mentioned earlier to, you know, about you were sort of excited to explore that stuff, the the mm-hmm. media and how it was affecting everything. I don't know if you just want to talk about that in this episode or in general. Yes, that, that sense of, because in the end, don't they all act like children, giddy with excitement at a new piece of news? It's that mm-hmm. sort of group think of like, you know, you'll never believe what kind of a day I had today, you know, and, and it, it just, fe- it, it so becomes a kind of a feeding frenzy and there's something ungainly about it, which we saw, I think, by the fact that <laughs> it's during the wedding photograph. Yeah. And in the middle of it, Amy goes, shit on my tits. Yeah, shit on my tits. Yes. <laughs> and then everyone, Wendy included, yeah. wants to get her phone out. Yeah. You know, it's that thing of like, I'm somehow disconnected if I don't know what's happening right now. No one's brave enough or confident enough to go, I'm sure if I left at 30 minutes, I'll still learn everything I need But if to you know. put that in a show now, it wouldn't really be funny. People would be like, yeah, you got to get on your phone. Yeah, whatever. Or you already yeah, have yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually don't put yeah. mine in the bowl. I can't put mine in the bowl. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it was a moment that we were yeah. in the middle yeah. of. Yeah, like the show yeah. sort of oddly tracks uh, like how how technology has ingrained itself in politics. Yes. Being that like in the first season, Mike doesn't have a Twitter account. He like goes to, he no. just doesn't. It's an afterthought. And now yeah. that's unheard yeah. of. There are politicians that What's only What's a username? Exist. What's a username? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, there, uh, to, also to that end, there's like this Jonah, Jonah starting a, yes. uh, Jonah Very much starting so. uh, a gossip West Wing, man. Site. I, I, I remember one of our reality advisors saying, well, that would never happen. There would never be someone in the West Wing um, being able to kind of under under the wire get this. And I think literally about three weeks after that episode went out, someone was fired from the West Wing for being the author of a website giving West Wing kind of gossip. Really? Yeah. So that's how fast that kind of um, techno- technology thing was happening, really. Yeah. I, re- yeah. yeah. I remember talking to Addison during rehearsals of this, and I was all, I was always uh, about uh, about about that scene of being fired, about trying yeah. to figure out a way to play all seven stages of grief during that, <laughs> like in order. I wanted to find a way, Denial. like, and it like it was fun. It I don't know that we actually ended up getting all seven in, but it was fun to be like, okay, all just right. deny that it's happening. It's not happening yes, at all, yes. and then get angry, but then try to bargain like it was actually like a fun exercise of trying yeah. to find comedy oh, wow. in a way of like trying to find different tacks like different so the final one is what the final one is what acceptance but Probably. that's you saying i'll be back in i'll be back in 2026 yeah as yeah. fucking as president. president that's a midterm yeah. year show <laughs> that's midterm year i'll change it there's there's like a great uh, here's Trumpian. another example of like a thing that's always funny and to me is also a very Armando joke. <laughs> People running in suits. In People hallways. running in suits. You, you love that. Mm-hmm. Love ahead. a lanky guy running in a suit. Yeah. And yeah. you love it when somebody is like something drops on the floor and somebody <laughs> instead of helping just steps over. Just, it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that happened. Yeah, in you, the, look, yeah. You, you looked genuinely annoyed when that happened <laughs> yes, to, like, to Joe. <laughs> That actually happens in full disclosure when they release everything. Yeah, Mike's trying happens, to pick up documents. It happens and somebody to Mike. like walks over, like right over a big old box of stuff. But it doesn't yeah. matter. You could have put it in every yeah. episode, and in every episode, I would have laughed at it. It's yeah. inherently yeah. Oh, funny. Oh, 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 that time in in the London episode where Mike and Gary accidentally knock over a oh my god tea oh. service. Yes, and. And Becky Martin was directing. She just so she just said, "Keep going, keep, keep going," and you do a whole going. Laurel and Hardy routine of trying to <laughs> hide it behind a curtain. Well, speaking, it's the it Queen's was amazing. China. It was amazing. Yeah, we we're sh- you're we're literally shaking and turning our backs to the camera so we can recover because yeah, yeah. some of that was actually usable. But yeah. the other thing, Tim and I like Laurel and Hardy. There's a moment in yeah. uh, uh, First Response. What's the Janet Ryland show called? The 
first Al- response. First response, Alice and Janney episode. And at the end oh, of it, right, yes. Selena admits to something that isn't true. And, and you have a yeah. cut, there's a cutaway of Jonah and Mike. And Jonah says, like, but that's not true to Mike. And Mike goes, I know. <laughs> like, it's so Laurel. <laughs> it's like a dumb guy saying what we all know already. And then the dumber yeah. guy yeah. going, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we want to do that show. We just want to have them go through all over the world and just do that moment in various situations. Yeah, right. It's always funny. <laughs> the, I wanted to bring up the guy, and I can't remember. I should again. I'm very lazy and didn't look this up. The guy that plays uh, Blake Stewart. Oh, Kevin O'Rourke. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So Kevin O'Rourke. I want to shout funny, him out. Funny. He, he had a terrible poem to read, and he yes. read it with such. Sadness and desperation. Oh. <laughs> he, does, he is described as a bag of wrist slits. Yeah. He, and wrist, <laughs> wrist slits. Wrist, wrist slits, wrist right? Slits. No, wrist, wrist yes. slits. Oh, wrist slits. Like, slits. Oh, yeah. I thought it was wrist slits. Wrist. No, a bag of like, he's no, no, cutting no, himself. Wrist slits. A cutting bag himself. of yes. suicide wow. is what he is described yes. as. And I yeah. like that he still has a charm that you could imagine somebody running for yeah. president, but also imagine yes. that person losing 49 states. That's right. Yes. Did, it's so, like one of those people you, you it's like one of those people you see who was an alcoholic and then you know drank a lot and then comes up to you very, very close in your face going, uh, I gave up drunk, best decision I've ever made. But yeah. really right up close to you. <laughs> just gonna they just look slightly. They are still themselves, but there's something slightly desperate about them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to, you do not want to be trapped with that person in conversation. No. So I, I was telling Tim, like, I love the set piece of Jonah getting fired. I just love how long it took and how Gary Cole as Kent is so angry, mm-hmm. but his language mm-hmm. is so Kent and logical mm-hmm. that he lays mm-hmm. out every detail of what his dumb website did to the president in this moment. Yes. And yes. obviously it gets heightened with Dan on his iPad filming it, right? Basically. Yeah. Yes. Um, Actually, it just struck me that Kent is another one who doesn't swear. He doesn't swear, does he, Kent? He's very controlled, isn't yes. he? Yes. Yeah. He said, like, like there's a there's a great line in the in the in the at the end of season two where he's like, when it comes to the president's thinking, I am becalmed. You know, like I am becalmed. <laughs> I am becalmed. Yes. And in this scene, he is like, uh, you know, the pres. He's so very formal, even when he's upset, mm-hmm. when he's furious yeah. at Jonah. The president had to move up to today. The announcement, like his his cadence and his. Yes. Phrasing is is very Kent and very logical, even as he's upset. No, uh, I just remember at table reads Gary's delivery of like Kent. Kent might just have like one sentence of one word in a whole scene, and it would always be one of the funniest moments yeah. in the scene. Just the way he, he just his timing and, and his delivery of, of it is just. Uh, so we always enjoyed writing things for Kent that were just little side prods to the to the main conversation well he is the character yeah gary came on the show he we talked about his character he is the character that you guys could write anything about his backstory or what happens outside of work yeah and and he would encompass it it's like yeah i guess that is believable that he did that or he has that collection or he had that experience right and it was also like hang anything on him yeah hang anything on him yeah that's the simplest way and it was also just again in the way that we feel like the show exploded like the way you guys wrote for Gary after he'd been with us for a couple episodes just exploded because it was like, you guys knew exactly what this weapon was. It was so, you know what I mean? Like you could see, I don't know. I think it's also getting to know the person and getting yeah. to know the actor and, and, and you know, it's then thinking, oh, what else can we do now? Now that we've seen them do this, that's given us an idea. Again, another reason why you mustn't write the whole thing in advance. Um. Or or, or be lazy. Oh, or, <laughs> or, be lazy. <laughs> or, or be lazy. Or be lazy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I think I think yeah. after Jonah gets fired, it's just like that. That's the that's the the. Oh yeah, we go to the funeral. Uh, oh, then she's yeah. alone in her room, and she's had a great moment at the funeral where she successfully yeah, yeah. roused the mourners and like crushed yeah. it and made herself come off as presidential, and. Uh, and then she's alone in the room. And this is like an emotional episode or certainly the ending because it's really mm-hmm. just about where Selena's at. Like she's had success, but she's alone, which is obviously foreshadowing the rest of her career. Like career, she, will, yeah. 
Yeah. She will be successful, but she'll be alone. And it's uh And she repeats she repeats her funeral speech but yes. for Mike's wedding. Yes. Yeah. That almost struck, line for line. Yeah. That struck me as so sad in that it felt like a like a child star who wants to repeat yeah. their tagline. I like I, I don't <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I found myself yeah. just so yeah. sad watching that moment. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. like and in ju- juxtaposed with again how happy Mike is, how truly mm. happy. He's mm. like, he has that terrible joke when you're cutting the cake where you're like, oh, my wife has a knife. <laughs> like, it's yeah. so, it's so. And beautiful. writing, the, we had great fun writing the vows. Yes. We, 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 always, we always knew they would write their own vows. So we had great fun writing that. And you deliver 100%. them with such sincerity. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, it's yeah. fun to play a character getting married. It's very yeah. like, it's a big moment. And like, yeah, I'm the satellite. You're our planet. I'm circling your I, gravity. I have, I have fallen for your gravity. Your gravity yeah. has pulled me in, Wendy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hogwash. <laughs> but it is let, like, let there be a let let the let there be an announcement or something, wasn't it? That here is the news. I am in yes. love. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because she's a journalist. Yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it is like it is like a sweet. Uh, yeah, it's cool to see the characters outside of Selena, and it's also. So fascinating to see her loneliness in that hotel room. Like you said, she's going through the yeah. mini bar and it's like, this is what it is. And it's very impactful. And there was an episode in season two that we were like, this is like a seminal episode. Do you remember we talked about it? We were saying like, there was like this explosion of meaning that, I don't know, I can't, re- eh, bad time to bring it up because we don't really rehearse these things. But anyways. <laughs> yeah, because Mike, ahead. I think is happy in this season because of his marriage and, and, yeah. and being in love and so on. And I think Selena kind of resents that. You know, she's annoyed by it, by the fact that Mike is happy. She probably is. Yeah. What is that the credit? No, the credit roll is everybody dancing at the wedding. Uh, right. is, is everybody yes. kind of dancing at the wedding and the shots of everybody has been giving Mike and Wendy copies of some new beginnings. And I feel like that's how it all ends. Oh, yeah. yeah the yeah. book is yeah. just the, like 18 yeah. copies of the book on the table. Yeah. And then Mike sees that Jonah's been fired and says, This is the happiest day of my <laughs> this life. Is so it's the not even, it's, day of it's my not life. even the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> which again is in not innovative but it was new like that was sort of interesting that i could grab that youtube clip the night it happened yes and then yeah. see it like we were immersed in that yeah 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 no, like it's, it's interesting yeah i'd forgotten that was yeah we were kind of riding that you know the internet and so on obviously it, it'd been around for a while but it, i think it was that point where it was becoming a tool that everyone can use everyone was becoming their own journalist and presenter and you know yeah. we were all able to just photo and, and record everything yeah i have a friend who's a writer who said like the cell phone just ruined so many plot lines like in the old days you'd yeah. have to find clues yeah. and and it's yeah. like the way it affects our shows it doesn't ruin anything but we were sort of riding this wave of exploding technology being yeah. ingrained in daily life right. um i think we're we're kind of come that's that's the end of the episode is there any like i know that we have to ask you if there's anything that you want to yeah. promote anything you want to promote or what you're up to that promote. you're excited <laughs> i want to promote about. i no, i i want people to forget stuff i don't want to promote that. yeah <laughs> okay but, however it did strike me I, I i hadn't realized this but april is the 10th anniversary of the first episode so is it really we ought to we ought to think about uh, doing something i don't know what. we should do like a everyone from the show or from the should tweet something at the same time, right? Like we should all put out the same dumb photo and have a different caption, maybe. I don't know. I'm right, just brainstorming okay. a different, a yeah, different yeah, yeah. take on that memory of like how Yeah. Baltimore or Mars. Like it should be a picture of something yeah. awful. And we go, Baltimore <laughs> or Mars. I don't know. Remember it was all meeting to stand below the big poster in in Sunset Boulevard of Oh big, yeah. 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 <laughs> That, oh, yeah. There's that that yeah, building yeah. on like 9,000 yeah. Sunset Boulevard where they always have the big Was HBO. that for season one we were there? Season one, yeah. And I've got I've got a photo of it up in Times Square as well. Yeah. yeah. It's it seems insane. It, it, it seems insane that it's been that long. Uh because it but as I mean, but as we're going through it, I mean, like there, yeah, like I don't remember jokes i don't remember plot lines no. and it even looks like a different person performing it <laughs> it's <Yeah>. very <laughs> very weird um 
Yeah, it's uh, so hectic too. Like obviously mm-hmm. you were going between continents <laughs> and yeah. doing other things. It's it's hard to pull details out. I'll say I, I know I've said it before, but I I thanks thank you for having not only the trust in me as somebody without as much experience to to have me on the show, but then also just generally thank you for trusting us as a group and as an ensemble. It was like an unbelievable working environment that we got to be in oh, for, well, no, for thank years you. and years. It was, it was very easy to do that because, you know, you're all so great and uh, talented and at the time cheap. So Yeah, um, that, that's yeah. the... Yeah, yeah I got to get a better agent. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I do, yeah, so appreciate that experience. And, uh, oh my God, <laughs> hold on. I texted Callie to see if she... Callie Hershaway, who was your assistant yeah. back in the day. Uh, let's see. Pretty sure when they were meeting President Hughes season two, when I looked at my emails, uh, because she's been sending a couple drafts that she happened to have that were like 60 Uh, pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like whatever. She has everything. 50 pages. Uh, yeah. (laughs) I will say while Walsh is looking at that, I will say whenever we've talked to the writers, the revisionist memory is that the scripts were always about 40 pages long. And I was like, I think it's more like 55. I, yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, I think maybe we're. I think maybe we're trying to paint a different picture. I always told myself that leaving this script to the last minute was a good thing. But for I've just finished shooting season two of Avenue Five, and because of COVID and so on, it got delayed by a year and a half. So as a result, we had all the scripts written uh, by the time we came to shoot it. Um, absolutely amazing experience. I wish. I could <laughs> <before>. <laughs> First time in a while. First time in a while. Uh, I, at the end of it, I thought, well, that was so easy. How, why what? didn't I do that before? Because you didn't have two and a half years or whatever the downtime was. Yes. You that, was a pandemic. that was it. That was it. All right. Here's two quick questions from Callie because we okay. love Callie. Uh, were there any stories that you might have yeah. wanted to tell but didn't get a chance to use over those four seasons? Anything fun left dangling? Oh, heavens. Heavens. Trying to think. Uh, I'm sure there are, but I can't remember. She's putting you on the spot. And I guess no. along with that, it's yeah. she says, did you feel like when you left the show that it reached an end point that you were satisfied with? Because you did create this like... Oh, yeah, yeah. That that ending for me was my finale. It was my end of season, end of thing. Not that, you know, I, I knew it was going to be handed over to Dave and, and he was going to take it. But for me the fact that the electoral college was split evenly for me was the ending because that for me summed up where I saw uh, American politics at the time, which is just locked in this kind of (laughs) nothing can happen because both sides are evenly split. That for me was the, was the ending. So, um, so it felt for me, it felt like the right time for me to stop. And then I gave David this, steaming turd of constitutional issues to then go and sort out for the next several seasons. <laughs> it's like that knot of headphone cables that you have to fucking figure out how yeah. to like get all these things untied. It's it it's way ban- too long. It's the banana you can't open, so you hand it to Gary and say, this is broken. <laughs> uh, is that bit when, when Mike, I think it's in the next season when Selena's doing her speech to Congress and Mike's got the old draft on a on a USB stick. Yeah. He sticks it in and he goes, oh, it's always the wrong way, isn't it? And you have to <laughs> and turn it the other way. <laughs> uh, Arm, it's been awesome to have you on. Thanks for doing oh, this. And nice if, yeah. uh, so great to see you, man. It's great. It's just great to see you. And we'll have you back on again. This is really fun. Oh, thank you. And uh, we must meet up. I've, I've so missed actually being out there. I've not been on a plane since the start of COVID, so I must oh. get back in. Now that it's all over, now that it's... Yeah, yeah now that yeah. it doesn't exist. Uh, possibly go wrong. Now that it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're yes, gonna, my, right. actually, my son's going to be in London for a school trip. Is your son Is your oh, son on stage anywhere in London? Uh, I don't... Not, in, not at the moment, no. Okay, not at the moment. all right. I, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would dispatch him to go check out some theater of your, okay. your boys. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, let's meet up and keep in touch and all that. Okay. Do you have any walkbacks, Tim? Oh. um, I'll start with mine. I'm going to walk back in general. My agenda to prove that Mike was bad, was not bad at his job. Oh, you're really? I'm going to walk it back. I'm going to say like that's become less interesting to me and also perhaps colored with 
my ego as an actor mm -hmm. and the way people perceived that person. Like, I think I'm able to separate that and it's more of a, it doesn't matter as in terms of conversational subject matter, I think is what I'm going to try to walk okay. back. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, that does. In other words, uh, I don't need to point it out so much. Okay. All right. Maybe, well, maybe, yeah. Okay. Is that a walk back? Yeah. No, I think it's a walk back. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have anything from today. Not that I did a great job or a poor job. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know that I, I think I, um, I, nothing sticks out to me as something that I need to walk back or double down. Well, on. one of your better shows, honestly, like, Honestly, you, I felt like you brought it. I think it helps that you're back. You're not I mean, traveling. honestly, being in studio is you're way, rooted. way better. Yeah, and you're back in LA. It's good. Yeah. It's good for the show. Yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. Um, we have a Reddit Q&A coming up. Uh, we don't have an official date or time for that yet, but I think we are going to submit. Uh, you're going to be able to submit your questions beforehand or live, and we'll be answering them right here in the studio. Keep your uh, eyes and ears open for the date. For the date and what we will do, so we like I tried to find out uh, what days or times for that is is better or worse. Um, but ooh, we might. Oh my have god, some we got to give away those tuxedos. Yeah, we got to give away those sake. tuxedos. And so uh, but we're going to leave the the AMA uh, the ask me anything. We're going to leave that up so that even if you're not able to be there right when we're answering the questions, you can still submit a question and we'll find it. Um, to that end, we love hearing your questions. Please submit your questions to castmediate.com forward slash second in command. I'm excited for Reddit because I don't think I've ever done a Reddit AMA. It's fun. It's fun. Never done one. Yeah. Uh, tune in every Tuesday for a new episode of Second in Command, a questionable Veep podcast from the Outsiders Insiders. A questionably accurate. Shit. A questionably accurate pod Veep podcast from the Outsiders Insiders. Got it. Uh, anyways, uh, check us out Tuesdays. We got a new one dropping every week. Uh, watch our episodes on Spotify as well as YouTube to get in on that action. Read us, follow us, review us, tell your friends. Word of mouth is really helping the show. We're building a nice following. Absolutely. We'll be five stars and thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you guys. Peace. Thanks for watching Second in Command of Veep Rewatch. Yeah. Please hit the subscribe button and tune in every Tuesday when the new ones drop. Rewatch the show for exclusive behind the scenes stuff, info, insight, and more. Episodes coming, and thanks for watching. Yeah, hit that uh, subscribe button. This is the mouse arrow, right? That's what you're representing. It's the cursor. A, put it, do a little circle with your finger, and it'll, it'll like be bigger so you can see where it is. Oh, okay. <laughs>